Okay, we're going to look at macros in photo. So macros are essentially recordable operations that you perform within the interface and you can record and play them back and also expose certain parameters to the user whilst the macro is playing back. So to begin with then, none of the macro functionality is exposed by default. What we have to do to enable it is go to View, Studio, and we have two panels here. So we have the macro panel, which will pop out over here. Then also we have the library panel, which will contain all of your imported and recorded macros. So then let's get started and record a sample macro. So across on the macro panel, I'll click record to begin recording. And let's do something simple. Let's create an edge based mask. So what I can do is go to layer duplicate. So that duplicates the selected pixel layer. Then I'll rename it to edge mask. Okay, then with the edge mask layer still selected, I'll go to filters, detect, detect edges. Then layer, rasterize to mask. And then finally, I'll hide it or uncheck it. So that puts it in a state for the user who runs the macro to be able to enable it and then use it how they wish. So now that we've finished the macro, we can click stop. And if I just delete that layer for a minute, I can then run the macro on my initial background pixel layer again. So if I click play, there we go, it's recreated the edge mask. So once again, I'll delete it. And then we can add the macro to our library by clicking the plus icon here. So we can save it into the default category. We haven't created any custom categories yet, but we'll get around to that, don't worry. So I'll call this edge mask generation. Okay, and you'll see here it takes us straight to the library panel where we can now click that macro to run it. Okay, so I'm going to cover the library panel in some detail, but before we do that, I'll just get rid of the edge mask again. We're going to record a slightly more complex macro. So to get rid of all these operations, we can just click reset macro. And this time I'm going to hit record again. I'm going to duplicate the background pixel layer, and I'm going to call this one local contrast. Then on the filters menu, I'll choose sharpen unsharp mask. And in order to increase local contrast, I'm going to use a radius of 100 pixels. Click apply. And then next, I'm going to set the blend mode to darken, and also drop the opacity down to 50%. Now then, what we're going to do is give the user who runs the macro control over the opacity. So over here you'll see the operation set global opacity. We can click the little cog icon here and you'll see that not only can we retrospectively change certain parameters, in fact, I'll just show you on the other operations, but also if we click the little eye icon, it then gives us the option to not only expose this parameter to the user during playback, but also we can give it a custom name. So for example, I could then name this Blend Strength. Click OK. OK, and then I'll stop recording the macro because we're finished there. So then I'll just delete that layer and run the macro on the initial background pixel layer and watch what happens. There we go, down here we've got that controllable parameter which influences the opacity of the local contrast layer. So when I go ahead and click apply, there's our layer that the macro has created and it's used the opacity value, otherwise known as the custom name we gave to it of blend strength. Okay, so let's have a more detailed look at the library panel then. You'll notice when I first created the edge mask generation macro, I only had the option to drop it into the default category, which by the way, we can expand and collapse. 
So this time then, let's create a new category from the Fire menu here. So it creates a new category with the default name of Macros. So here we can choose Rename. And let's just call it Custom Macros. Then we can click drag Edge Mask Generation and drop it into our Custom Macros category. So then, let's save this macro to the library. And this time, we'll choose to drop it in the Custom Macros library by default. And we'll call this one Local Contrast. OK, and do also note that you can share and back up your macros, either by category, so you can click here again and choose Export Macros, for example. Or you can export macros individually by using the Export option here. Importing individual macro files using this option will allow you to populate this list and see how a macro has been created. But you can also do this from the library. So for example, you can right click Edge Mask Generation and choose Edit Macro. So it's worth bearing that in mind, because you can actually just have your library full of macros without having to export them individually. And if you want to revisit one and see what you did or tweak some settings, you can just right click it and jump straight back in. So that's all for this video, and I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions or queries, please don't hesitate to ask on the official Affinity forums. And don't forget to check out the other video tutorials. Thank you for watching.